All right. So last time we left off, we just covered how to set up our um, our workspace, and that's very important. It's very important that you have a workspace that you can deal with um, that's conducive to your work environment, your level. Um, if you are just starting out, it doesn't hurt to have those extra polygon modeling tools up in the shelf. Um, it absolutely doesn't hurt to have anything up there. It's just sometimes it can be a crutch to stop you from learning the ever important markup menus. So I'd say it's, it's one of the most important things is learning the markup menus as far as using the, the software itself. Um, once you can do that, your, your workflow just increases exponentially. But now let's get into our, our weapon that we're going to create. So here's what I've built in Photoshop. And also, you'll have to excuse my roommate, or my sweet mate. He's uh, being really loud. I don't have a roommate, but I still have a sweet mate, and he's being really loud right now. Plus, it's a Saturday night during summer, so... I'll probably, I'll, I'll probably run the audio through Logic Pro and make sure that I can get rid of all those sounds that you might be able to hear, if you can hear them. Otherwise, that just sounds like a mess of nothingness. That means nothing. So, what we have here is, um, is something that I've built in Photoshop, and it's the orthogonal views of the weapon that we're going to be creating. Um, here we have our side view, here we have our front view, and here we have our top view. So, I've labeled everything here just to um, kind of explain how everything would theoretically work if this were a real thing. Um, and then for the concept, I'm just going to cut out that whole part and I'm going to say if you want to read this paragraph, go to my website or my Facebook page. Because it's just going to sound stupid me trying to rush through it. But the point of, of this screen here is to understand that when you're developing a concept, it's important when you're doing like a silhouette or a blob um, pre-construction where you're just tossing out ideas, no, you don't have to know what everything does because you're just throwing stuff out there. And that's how I started this. But once you, you find a silhouette that you really like, you should probably define what those things that you just threw in there because they look cool do. So, and then you can add and remove things as you see, you know, this isn't important at all, this is extremely important, um, I need to make this bigger, smaller, etc, etc, as the, the idea starts to fit the, um, the shape. Um, after that, you um, would draw, most people would draw perspective views, and they just sketch that stuff out, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I am not a great 2D artist. It's true. I'm terrible. I can't draw worth crap. And that's why I use the silhouette, because it's easy to start with a side orthogonal, and then you can use that to build a top orthogonal, and then a front orthogonal. But when it comes to actually drawing it in perspective, I can visualize it, but I can't put it down on paper. So next semester I'm actually taking a few drawing classes that hopefully will fix that. But I know it's it's really just me getting down and drawing it, but I have two jobs. What are you gonna do? Anyways, enough about me. And this is the um, the idea of the weapon. You can go to facebook.com slash Michael Easter artist if you want to view it um, and read this this concept. And it's important to have a concept. So next I just went ahead and I I exported my orthogonals, my front, my side, and my top. Made sure they all lined up together, they're all appropriately sized, etc, etc. If you've taken a beginning Maya class or beginning 3D class, this, this is all old news. And that's where I, I hope people are. <sighs> Delicious. Anyways, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start out by setting our scene. Um, a couple things I want to do first that's still in the, the workspace realm 
is I want to get rid of the time, the time slider, because I really don't need it when I'm modeling, and it gives me extra space to work with. Um, display, UI elements, range slider, there we go, look at that, we just gained like so much space down here. Fantastic. And you should always try and arrange your workspace according to um, to what you're working with. Um, another thing for for working workspace, working workspace, is control space on a Mac at least will hide all of the UI elements, and you have to be safe, sure to be safe, not to save this while you're in this spot. Otherwise, it'll save your scene as no UI elements as the default. And then when you open it up, it's going to have no UI elements, and you try and shift back, no UI elements is the default. But just make sure you save your, your scene with your, your settings like this. Um, so we're going to start out by setting up our scene. One of the important things, I got rid of the, there's a little way to open up preferences over here. Um, one of the most important things for setting your scene is to have a unit like it doesn't really matter exactly which units you use just as long as you have something that you can relate to real world scale um, so I recommend always using meter if at, or or centimeter if you're making something small um, this is even where actually I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna use centimeter because I want 70 centimeters. What's important is to be working what's what's nice about metric and for well metric number one is just awesome already but what's important for the 3D aspect is that most game engines and Maya operate natively in metric. It's where it wants to be the um, if you've ever used the component editor it's always in centimeters no matter what you're working in, it's always gonna, gonna gonna send you your polygons and your positions in centimeters. So make sure. I, I highly recommend that you're using any metric. So now that we've we've established our our setting for space, let's create a new a new project. So we're gonna go down to File, Project Window, New, and Actually, I think I've already made a project for this. Yes, I have. But after you've made your project, you should know how to do that. I don't have any scenes in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my project to that one that I've already created, the plasma rifle. So I'm going to save, command S, and I'm going to name this, I work in iterations, I make sure that I save every once in a while under a new name, because if I screw something up, I want to be able to roll back on what I had. So I'm going to call this, since I'm in a project for the weapon and the weapon only. Now if you're working in a larger scheme where you have a whole file hierarchy and you're already working with unity or something then you're gonna wanna be more specific but for here I'm gonna do it as um, geometry and I'm gonna save it using an underscore not a space important geometry one and there we go it's saved now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import my orthogonals my side orthogonal is always the most important. It's the one that I've started with. It's the one I'm most familiar with. You can use that button, or there's another way to get to it. But I like the easiest way to get to something. I think it's... It doesn't make sense to not go after the easiest way to do something. So I'm going to go into orthogonals, and I'm going to do side open, and there we go. There's my side orthogonal. But it didn't come in 
with an alpha channel. Okay, and we're back. My bad about that. I actually saved them as targets, but I didn't save the alpha channels. So I had to go and re-export re them all. So we're going to do the same thing here. Orthogonals, side 3, open. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Um, and then we're going to go into front. Where is it? Front 3. It's in the wrong spot. I don't I don't like working with things in the wrong spot. I think everything should be where it belongs. Otherwise, it's just madness. Uh, so I'm going to put in front here, and then I'm going to put in top over here. There we go. You can see already that I've done a pretty good job of matching them all up. But since these are cameras, they can only be selected in the um, in this view, perspective view. So I'm going to go ahead and change some of these around. I'm going to move the center X back. I believe moving them to negative values are the way that they don't interfere with um, where the camera is looking. So I'm going to bring the top one down, and I'm going to bring this one to negative Z. And that should be great already. That should be exactly what we're looking for. So. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them on a layer. I'm going to call that layer image plane layer. Save and then save. So now I've got these on a layer. I can make them reference. Thought I could make them reference. Okay, so good to know you actually can't <laughs> reference them. You can't reference image planes. That's news to me. But we're going to start out. We always want to model in an orthogonal view. Um, I mean, not always. But when you're starting out a model, you want to build from the orthogonals. And you want to think in the size of, or in the manner of, how was this manufactured? So I'm going to think in pieces. Well, this piece here is thinner than this piece here. So obviously they're separate pieces. Um, but they've been assembled together. We're still going to make one object, but we're going to think in, in terms here. These little um, heat sinks that pop off, they're not only removable, but they're also manufactured separately. Um, and these components here were manufactured separately, but they're all fused together. But I want to start with one set at a time. And where I want to start and why I want to start there is important. So I'm going to start on the skinnier side because when I'm modeling the larger side, I want to be able to have the skinny side out of the way. Um, if I did it backwards, to try and clarify that, the, the front part, which is thicker, would be blocking my view of the stuff in the back when I'm looking at it from this angle. I could hide the faces, isolate, select, all that stuff. But why do that when you can just do it right in the first place. So I'm trying to think of, of what I'm going to do here. I can either create a polygon using the create poly tool or I can just start from a square and start extruding and building out from that. And both are perfectly good options but I don't want to have to spend time cutting the topology into the, the new poly object. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with a square. 
So I'm going to start up here, and go down here. I'm gonna hop in here. And I'm gonna pull it out as big as that section is. And you can see that that section only goes to about right there. And voila. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm only going to be modeling half the object. Because in this view, I don't want to get confused and start screwing shit up. That's the worst way of possibly saying what I meant to say. But let's go with it. And I'm going to insert an edge loop here. Because I want one there. I'm going to insert an edge loop here. And I'm making sure to select through the, uh, the vertices because otherwise I'm not going to be grabbing all of them. I think I'm going to take this one back in center. Now notice how I'm not actually touching the um, the arrows like this. It's it's a very nice trick. Um, what you do is you select a component, and then you go into your move tool, and you shift, and then you middle click, and then in the direction that you drag is the direction that it's going to move. So it's going to instantly recognize which way you're going and move only in that direction. That's an incredibly useful tip to know. It makes it so you're not struggling to grab the, the arrows every time. You're not fiddling with the size of them all the time. Um, just another way to, to speed up your workflow. So I'm going to put in a few more divisions here. Cut faces tool, holding down shift. Moving these vertices into where they are on my concept art. Simple as that. And I see that I don't like how blocky that looks there, so I'm going to cut it up. Again, move this over, move this down. And again, I don't really like how that looks, so I'm going to cut the faces again. And I don't want to use the insert edge loop tool right now, because I want more control where the top goes. Now it's important, um, since I said that, to make sure that when you're doing polygonal modeling, especially for games, that you are being very economical about all your vertices. And what I mean by that is while most gaming engines can handle a lot more now, it's still important to optimize and have as few vertices as possible. So if you're going to create vertices, you'd better use them for something. If you just create vertices and then you leave them um, where they're not making a difference to the shape of the model, then you have wasted vertices. Unless you're doing like um, painting vertices and whatnot, because then that's just incredibly economical no matter what you do. But even then, you'd still want to move those vertices around to create more shape to the object, unless it's within the style of the game to, to have bloggy objects. Like, because when you're painting vertices, you're usually working with something like, uh, an arcade game, like, 8-bit retro style. Um, type stuff. Actually, that was in the right place. I moved it. I shouldn't have. Add two divisions here. Get them about where I want them. Do, 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 do. And we're 
we're starting to look pretty good already. I'm going to start moving some of these around. I'm going to lose my, my perfectly straight lines, which, let me tell you, I love so much. But they don't last forever. So now I am going to start using some, some edge loops. So I've got this, this square in here that I need to cut out. And I have, this is again thinking economically. I have a square here that I need to cut out. So I need two edges flowing through that, at least. And then I have this curve back. And the curve back is going to be a pain because that's, that's a lot of topology. Or a lot of vertices, at least. Um, so I'm going to try, while I'm working through this, is to find a way to use as many of the vertices as possible and not have extra ones. And I can use what um, someone called, I don't know who called them this, but displacement polygons, uh, which is where he actually maintained all quads and managed to uh, to make things work, to get his objective done. So I'm just moving these over here for now. I'm not sure which ones I want to merge yet. So I'm just moving these, these in here. Undoubtedly, almost all of these in here are going to go away. But for right now, when you're in the modeling stage, um, just to get a shape, you're not worrying too much about the extra vertices. You're thinking about what you're going to do later with them, but you're not you're not actually acting on that. Uh, because you can see, I'm I'm going to want some a couple edges through here to uh, to build out some shape this way. Um, so that's why I'm not. I'm deleting all of them, but these two really are going to be the ones that I'm going to want to keep, and these three maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and follow these right now, and I am going to get rid of these. I'm going to merge all these over. Now, what's important to realize is that I do have the back side of this polygon here, which I almost forgot about. Since I'm working on only getting this outline shape, I should have really started with a plane. So I'm going to hop in here. I'm going to delete all of this. Because I can extrude the shape later, and that way I'm not worrying about am I selecting through them all the way, etc, etc. And I'm kind of going a little slow on the market menu commands so that you can can see what I'm doing at least the first time. Um, and just snap, I'm just holding down the V key while I'm doing that other action. So it's, geez, I don't even know it's a muscle memory at this point. <laughs> um, so what am I doing? I'm holding Shift V middle mouse to do that. And I'm going to merge these together. I'm going to merge these together. And now I'm working with a lot less volumes. I don't like actually how I merge some of these at the start. I'm going to delete these three. And then I'm going to quickly rebuild this topology. I'm using the uh, the split poly tool, not the interactive split tool, because I believe wholeheartedly that the interactive split tool was made to torment us. Honestly, <laughs> no, I'm just not going to get into it unless you're working with extremely small objects, where the magnet 
strength um, will apply better. It's it just it doesn't work. You you get into something that's larger than ten meters that exceeds the grid size and it's it's all of a sudden it's it's not working. Um, so here's where I'm going to start thinking about how can I maintain good topology. And if you don't know what topology is, it's time to learn what topology is. And come back and view this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add two divisions and I'm going to work with the uh, the topology in a second. I'm going to do that and that. And I'm not incredibly concerned about maintaining a perfect curve back here. And the reason that I'm not is because this is the part of the gun that's going to be up against the character's shoulder. And it's the part that um, is not going to be seen in the camera of a video game at all times. So I'm not incredibly concerned about it. I want it to look good on the ground, like, you know, you're dead, there's your gun on the ground. Um, and that was, that was just another way of doing the same thing. My mouse is acting up. I think the batteries are almost dead. But I'm not going to worry about that till after this video. Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead. You can see this. that's one of the instances where it, it probably would have been faster for me to just hop up here and click the Add Divisions tool. Um, it's actually a perfect example. If you double click on uh, an item up there, it brings you into the options box. A little square that you'd normally see in the menu. So there we go. And now I'm going to fix the topology. I've got a hotkey to mix hotkeys. Make some hotkeys. Make ones that work for you. Um, what I use are some of my professor's hotkeys. He has control schemas, which are, he has like control option command and then N or V or E to, to highlight the different components or show the different components. So control option command V is show vertices, N is show normals, things like that. Are, are useful control systems for, for your hotkeys, which you should really all have um, those hotkeys. And you'll notice that I, I clicked on it and then I hit G, and that's why I got a lot more than, um, than the preference was set to. Now I want to have this a little bit of a curve. I don't want it to be straight there. Um, and this is the part where it's just gonna, gonna turn into to me working and it's kind of a, a talk through. I was actually kind of thinking of that. It's not really a tutorial. Um, so I wanted to come up with a new word for it and I thought talk through. Talk through works pretty well because I'm not, I'm not guiding you step by step through what I'm doing. I'm just talking about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I don't know if that really helped or not. See, this is the part. It's, it's okay to, to stop when you're, when you're working on something and think about the practicality. For instance, I was trying to figure out exactly how long I wanted the weapon to be. So I got my tape measure, and I started fooling around with different sizes. I thought my arm is about 0.7 meters, and that's and I wanted to come a little a little past the um, the elbow to get the counterbalance, uh, and that's how I decided how long I wanted my gun to be. I did this, looked like a fool, but incredibly useful.
Don't be ashamed of that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm trying to get this as smooth as possible with as few polygons as possible. And that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go. That's how you get to that. There, there. There, here, here, here. That did not like me. And you can see that I'm getting tries instead of quads. I don't like that, and I'll tell you why. Because a lot of tools work better with quads, um, especially in the case of smoothing and in the case of bevel edge, which I intend to use later. It works best in quads. So triangles are great. They're eventually what everything's going to get boiled down to. But quads are nice for the production process. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. Bam acceptable topology. Now notice I said acceptable topology. It's not at all grand topology, but it's a starting point. You see I'm, I'm starting to put this up here so that when I do get to thinking about the front, I can I can do the, the extra topology that I need and fix it around. I say topology a lot. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do that. I'm not going to stop. I like the word. And it's true. Everything I say. Not everything I say. Everything I say about topology. Topology is your friend. Okay. It's kind of like in uh, high school. I was taking AP Physics. I had to remind myself every day before physics. Physics is fun. You know? Physics is fun. Give you a hint. It's not. Physics is terrible. But incredibly useful. And again, notice that I'm using all my vertices. If I change it on the top and I just add one at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and move that one on the bottom to do something with it. So. It's easier to extrude faces than edges, and better to do so, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So this is a little more of a steeper curve, so I already know I'm going to need a little more topology than I would on the other ones. And I'm leaving these in for now. I might decide later to put them closer to the center here. But I'm leaving them in now because I want to be able to pull this section out, kind of like the, uh, kind of like a barrel of an AK-47 or a butt of an AK-47. Um, it's kind of that's not the command I wanted to hit. It's kind of the idea. It's kind of like a, a wooden base, but it's actually going to be metal. It's important to know what your materials are before you start. Um, texture, because again, it's it's how the object is manufactured actually plays quite a pivotal role in your modeling process. It's not like the end of the freaking world if you don't think about how your object is creating, but. 
it is useful. I'm going to extrude these again. Oh my, again, the curve is tighter here so I can have less space in between them. Move these verses down, down, down. And again, we're still kind of far away from the front of the barrel. But the reason that I am adding some of this extra topology is because this is this is going to be a base model. I'm thinking about using it for animation and for game as well. And so um, it's kind of going to be useful on all fronts. So I want to make it appropriately, or at least make it a compromise between them. Like I said before, game engines can handle more and more polygons these days. Like, have you seen the the frostbite stuff? It is fantastic. I think it's called frostbite. So the new battlefield runs on, and holy crap, that's a lot of polygons. Of course, it's being rendered for a gaming console, which have absurdly good hardware. Um, you'll notice another trick that I'm using is instead of pulling on the, the control handles that I get from uh, extruding, I'm just moving out instead. I'm clicking the, the move tool W and then I'm, I'm pulling out again. Like that. And the reason that I do that is because those handles are derived from the the normals of like vertex normals and face normals and all that complicated stuff when you get into animation you, you'll deal with that a little more um, what was I saying Jeez. because those handles are are based on those things, they're sometimes not exactly accurate, and they sometimes pull in weird angles that you don't want to do. And right now, I want to be working on the world axis and the world axis alone. That's, that's all I want to be dealing with. So if something starts trying to use another axis, I'm like, no, no, no. It's not what we're doing. Um, Gotta stretch sometimes. If you don't move when you're doing this for a long time, your hands start to get cold. Like if you play video games, you know the cold hands. Um, it's not the worst idea to get up and stretch every every half hour or so. Not so much that you're you start losing your train of thought and your productivity, but um, to the point where not dying okay so here's where we're starting to run into the other piece and I'm not going to be afraid to run through it I'm gonna run through it all the way to the front of the handle I'm going to extrude again with the G key and I want to build out later, so I'm going to go to there. Now, I'm going to pull it back to the start. So I can take these vertices, and I can put them where I really want them. And that means I have to add one more vertice here, or four more vertices here. I'm not going to cry over that. There we go. The mouse is really loud, I'm sure. I was hearing that a little bit in my last video. I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it down from my handle. And then 
and start playing with some of these topologies. <sighs> It's actually a little harder than I anticipated to, to talk through this model at the same time. See, I'm wondering if it's worth cutting in these, these little rubber grips here. And it's always easier when you're, you're working in Maya to have more objects. It's always easy to just have them intersect, parent them together, group them together, you know, great, they'll move together and everything. But when you start moving it over to a gaming engine and you've got complex stuff in the scene going on, um, you, you want to have less objects because it starts to clutter up your inspector and everything just goes to hell. But you also... Here, cutting this in is going to require more polygons. And you can't, and as much as I've been saying this whole time, it can handle more, it can handle more, it can take it, it can take it. You can't do that for everything, or you're going to wind up in some trouble. Some optimization issues, no doubt. Um, so I think I'm going to make them as separate objects for now. And I can always cut them in later if I want to. Is that the right choice? I don't know, but it's the choice I'm going with. Um, so I'm just going to cut in here. Because this does need to be in here. See, now I'm kind of wasting the polygons on the right side, because I have nothing to do with them. What am I supposed to do with those? Screw up my topology, that's what. Um, I'm going to take this and put two divisions on it. close together. I'm going to put them where I want them. And here's where I'm debating doing this now, debating doing it later. I'm going to do it now. Because that's what I want to do. Later, I can just scale it differently when I need to. I don't know what what thing I just called there. That's dangerous. Poly split, poly split. I think I went a little too far, or I acted a little too slowly on the market menu. That can happen sometimes, but don't let it discourage you from using the market menus because it's the one thing. And now in this case, I am going to use these. No, I'm not. I was going to use them because I thought it would pull them in different directions, but it didn't do it for me. I'm going to move those out there. You see me using the polycut tool a lot. It's really not my favorite tool. But right now it's doing it for me. Like normally, see the reason why it works now is because it's a face. But you can see it did actually screw up there cut through a part that I didn't want to cut through. I just thought of that. 
insert edge loop tool is much much nicer for that kind of aspect um, yeah that's all I have to say about that it's because it's not going to cut through an area and you get to see where the edge loops are going um, with the cut tool you're just going to cut straight through it you have multiple objects in the scene it's going to cut through the objects if you're cutting through an object mode um, if you select a component like I could have selected those faces and then did that well, which is less clicks that's what it comes down to sometimes a lot of the time it comes down to which is going to take me less clicks of my mouse so I've got these these pieces here these vertices already here. They're going to be useful for me. Um, I'm going to actually delete these faces because I don't need them. I don't need it. I'm not going to keep it. You can see which way that it wants to cut the edge loop. And that's sometimes why you'll want to go ahead and do this. Because I want to tell it where to go. And because this this is actually worse topology. And that's a matter of fact. This is a worse topology than the insert edge loop tool. It is manually doing it yourself. I'm not going to worry about it. Whatever. Actually, it's like, no. That was right. That was right. My bad. So, I should have taken a mark of how long I've been going. Okay, it says 48 minutes. I said I was going to make these an hour long each. So, I'm going to hold true to that, and I'm going to keep going. So, here, what I want to do is I want to cut along here so that I can have a shape to extrude from out to create this, uh, this larger surface here. And remember, we're working in an orthogonal view. This is all we've done so far. We haven't pulled anything out in, in any of the other dimensions. It's important to remember that you're working in orthogonals. Um, I'm going to pull these down. And I'm going to insert some edge loops, which are probably going to pull down or see bad topology. This here is pointed at the screen. <laughs> no. Um, this triangle here is throwing off our topology. Because like I said, things work in quads. If these were running here and then these were running here, it would cut straight down. But it's bad topology here. I want to add those though, and see now that that's a quad, it can think it's way down. Further and further every time. Sometimes edges get stuck like this. Just highlight them and unselect them. And then go back to what you're doing. On the trigger. And now I'm going to work on pulling these down. So I don't know exactly how these tutorials are going to be used. If, if you're skipping through them, no, that's fine. I understand. You're not hurting my feelings. Um, just see how I do a certain part. The, the point of these tutorials is for you to use them as you need them. So I'm not going to feel bad if you're jumping around. I'm 
again, I'm here to help you guys out. So, this is why they have clocks in the back of classrooms, so you're not looking at them. Now I want to enter edge loops here. Here, but I don't want it to do that. So another trick you can use is select your faces. And this the reason I call the subdivide instead of whatever it's actually called or divide component whatever is because it works on everything. Right now I'm adding divisions to face. Earlier I had it on edges. I don't know how the UVs are set out, so I did it the wrong way the first time. It's an everything tool. It's fantastic. So here, I'm going to grab this. Again, got stuck. Add division to edge. It's going to throw two on there. Here, move this here. Grab this face, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete all these faces. I'm going to pull this out. I shouldn't have put this edge here. I'm going to move this to where I need it. Now I'm going to fix the topology here. Here again, I'm an RA, so that's why I looked at the looked off camera earlier. Someone's doing something they're not supposed to in the hallway. But I am modeling right now. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm going to move these verses up to match with this. And everything while well, boils down to tries. Ultimately, it boils down to pixels. You have to think about how many pixels is this going to be on a screen? A full HD screen. Because, quite frankly, I always think in full HD. I assume that people are always going to be using my content on full HD screens. Why? Because HD's been around for like 10 years now. More than that, maybe. I don't know. Don't, don't fact check me on some of this stuff. <laughs> it's been around for a while. And that's no doubt. And the fact that people still think it's okay not to use HD and publish in HD 
even if it's 720, no, look, make your stuff in HD. There's no reason not to be. So as I'm moving further away from uh, from the camera, I'm doing a little extra topology. I'm adding more vertices than I would on the other side. Needs to line up this edge, extruding it. Um, I like to always keep everything nice and neat. Like just snapping stuff like that is something that I like to do personally because it makes things easier to work with, in my opinion. Um, it makes things cleaner and maybe I'm OCD. I don't know. Connect components. That's what I keep firing. Instead. So I'm going to take these over, over again. And make sure that these line up with the other side. So now I am. Say the one thing that's slowing me down is that I'm working in wireframe. It's sometimes hard to get those right click markup menus. Um, it's also not exceptionally easy to talk through this. Think about how stupid you're sounding while you're running through this. So now I've got some extra vertices up here that I'm going to put to good use because that's what we do. Make sure that we're using all of our vertices to maximum efficiency. No vertice is without a purpose. I'm going to go on to finish out this part of the handle and then We'll take a break. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to change some of this topology here. Add two maybe here. Let me think. Let's see how two works. Not bad. At all. And like I was saying earlier, with, with Full H, everything boils down to pixels, but assume that your video is being watched on the highest end equipment. Maybe when you're watching this, 4K is caught on. How fantastic would that be? And you're, you should be producing 4K content. Not, oh, Michael said to do uh, Full HD, not 4K, blah, 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 blah. no. That's not what I said. I said produce for the highest level. Or at least the standard that's been around for a while. Maybe not the highest level. It's a little ridiculous. Because my phone supports 720p HD. And I know there are phones out there that now support full HD. If your phone can handle it, you need to be producing in that. Bare minimum. I mean, that's not to say that phones today aren't great. They are. But you gotta keep up with the times.
because they are a change. Faster than you know. And in a good way. I'd say most of the changes I've seen in the last few years are good changes. So here it's going to be really tempting to grab the space and hit. You can see at my, my workstation I actually have it set up to do this. And it's so tempting all the time and sometimes I end up doing it. This is just go triangulate, quadrangulate, bam, my topology's done. Fantastic. No, no, no. This is never going to have the best topology, the topology you want. Sometimes, like what I'm going to do right now, because it actually didn't do as bad of a job that I thought it was going to, you can go in here and you can tweak it yourself. You can say, no, I wanted this edge here. I wanted this to be a quad, and I want this to be this, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I definitely want an edge on this corner one, and that's why I did that. The furthest one, especially for beveling and stuff like that. So you made this a quad, and it's got this reaching all the way over here. But I don't even want this vertex, okay? So, you're on there. What? Computers only do what you tell them to. And that is something that I think needs to be more clearly spoken to some uh, doomsayers. AI and shit like that. No. Computers do what they're told. Would it be awesome if we could have them self-aware? No, probably not, because we use them as slaves. So... I mean, think about it. When was the last time you paid your computer? You didn't. This is getting way off topic. Okay. I... that's... <laughs> Did I just say that? Oh my god. Okay. So we've about fixed up this topology here. And see, now we've got all quads. And I think I've changed just about every edge that it automatically, it automatically made for me. Because I wanted these, these are both going to be flat, so I want them together. I want everything where it wants to be. This looks like a topology area, topology area that I'm going to have to fix up. But I'll do it next time. Because I think we're over an hour, and I think that YouTube's going to throw in ads and shit at half hour marks and you're just gonna skip to the new video when you have 30 seconds and only four or five minutes left. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop this and we're going to pick up here next time.